Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Drew. This is Just a Guy Linux and this is day five of our 60 videos in 60 days. The last three days we've looked at three different window managers, BSPWM, i3, and Openbox. And you've seen the status bar at the top of every single one. That's Polybar. And today we're doing a deep dive. What is it? How to customize it? And why it works across completely different window managers. Now let's talk about the most flexible status bar in Linux. Polybar is a status bar. It shows system information, workspace indicators, volume, time, whatever you want. Now you have alternatives. i3 bar comes with i3. Lemon bar is very minimal. XFCE4 panel for traditional desktops. So why Polybar for these setups? I mean, the answer has got to be built-in modules. I mean, you just say RAM, CPU, disk, and so on, workspaces. Uh, and it is, for the most part, window manager agnostic. You can get it to work on just about anything. Now, I didn't say it at the very beginning, but this is BSPWM, the same version that we installed on day two. Um, and if you're looking at this line here uh, on the slide, Basically what it's showing you is everything between these two brackets are on the left. This would be in the center, and then this would be um, on the right side of the polybar. So you're gonna see RAM, CPU, disk, and then you also have workspaces in the middle and so on. Now, as far as lock is concerned, so if I just hit the um, cap lock key, it kind of pops up there and says, oh, well, you got your cap lock on. So that's that's basically what that is. Now, when I go to the next slide, um, I want to talk about two things. One is I have added a second INI or a second polybar to the BSPWM project. It's a little bit more um, colorful and it uses icons instead of just plain text labels, okay? So I just wanted to make that clear. You don't necessarily need like, because you would need nerd font icons in order for this to work. You don't need anything when it comes to the minimal uh, config. Now I was gonna show you all three uh, polybar INIs, but they're so similar that I thought it's not really necessary. I can just show you one and you get, you'll get it, the concepts on all three. And that's why I included a second um, INI for BSPWM, just so that you can see minor changes uh, so that you can also choose if you want to, you can just say, oh yeah, I like that one better. So when I go to the next one, you're gonna notice that, <clears throat> excuse me, that when something is defined as a module, each module will be defined separately. So you have an opportunity to kind of like configure each module specifically and individually. So I'm gonna to go to Workspace 2 and look at these two INIs, two polybars, roughly the same, but one will kind of demonstrate uh, a little bit of a change so that you can kind of modify it yourself. When I am on the left side here, this left side, is actually what you are currently looking at. It is the minimal text-based polybar that is part of the BSPWM, part of the i3 and the open box projects that we've been looking at for the last three days. So I'm reiterating what was on that one slide. You've got modules left, and then you've got memory CPU file system. Memory CPU file system up in the left-hand corner of this polybar. X workspaces is in the middle. Um, currently, these are the occupied workspaces, one, two, and three. And then you've got modules right, which is lock, which is now is visible because I just <laughs> hit the caps lock. And then you've got tray. So if anything, you know, pop, you know, like if I was to start something like, I don't know, a screen key, it would show up in uh, this tray. And then you've got Pulse Audio date and hour, okay? Now we are using BSPWM. Actually, let's let's verify that so everyone can just say, yep, that is BSPWM. Okay. Um, and when 
we are looking at the user.config. Again, this is based on my uh, BSPWM hyphen setup that's at, um, that's at Codeberg. Uh, everything that you need is part of this .config BSPWM directory. And that includes everything from Polybar. So you're gonna see there is a script and then two INI files, again, config.ini and sls.ini. This is brand new, by the way, this SLS. I, I did this like a day ago, okay? But the polybar BSP, uh, hyphen BSPWM basically launches polybar for you. Now, why did I do that, that this way? Um, it, it made sense to me when I did it at the time because I wanted to be able to restart things a lot more, I don't know, streamline. So for example, what does that script do? All that does is it kills Polybar and then it restarts Polybar because that's what you definitely wanna do, especially when you uh, make a change and then you reload or restart BSPWM, you want it to kill the polybar and then restart the polybar. Right now, it's starting, it's it's killing and then restarting config.ini. But what if I just changed it? Because, you know, again, both of these are in the same directory. So all I need to do is change uh, one uh, to the other. And in this case, I'm just gonna save it um, and before I restart, let's, let's just, again, let's talk about this. Two days ago, I mentioned this, okay? I mentioned that BSPWMRC, or the configuration file for BSPWM, is a bash script. So it is starting all of these programs for you, Dunce, PyCom, and so on. And then it is running this script, which starts, which actually kills, and then starts polybar, right? It kills and then starts polybar, okay? Now, what are the changes that are going to be once we reload BSPWM? Well, workspaces is going to go from the middle to the far left. We are going to add X window, which is gonna be like a title of the application that is in focus and then you're gonna have a lot of the, well, actually I'm over here. Then you're gonna have a lot of the kind of like readouts that you would, that's split right now between the left and the right. So let's go ahead and use super shift R. And there you go. BSPWM has restarted. The uh, X workspaces is now on the left. And in this case, it's even showing uh, workspaces that have no window occupying that workspace. So one, two, three, and four are in bold, but five is obviously uh, a gray and the rest of them as well, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now I'm not sure I like this, um, but I did leave it in because I thought it would be something that uh, other people might. Now, the reason why I guess I don't like it as much as maybe the other one is because on a 1920 by 1080 monitor, this looks a little crowded to me. Now, if I was on an, my ultra wide, I think it would be fine. It, it, it probably is, it's fine. But overall, I would say I'm, I, would, I would change this back if it was me. But again, to each his own. So let's go over here and just look at the differences really quickly. It was very simple getting the color scheme, you know, because the RAM, the CPU text uh, was all using the same color. So you didn't have to, you can just say, oh, I'm gonna set the primary color. And it was really simple that way because you could just define what primary color is. And if you wanted to change it, you could do so. And then all the text would change. In this case, you'd, if you were using these font icons, uh, you might want them to be different colored, which is why um, they are defined within each module. Now the obvious, <clears throat> now there is a difference obviously between uh, the two workspace um, uh, modules. Let's go all the way up to here. Yeah, right here, 75. So 
Yep. Um, and when you're looking at these two, the only difference is that uh, in this current, on in the sls.ini, I actually have the name in the label empty. And that is what is showing, that is giving it a, the ability rather to show the unoccupied workspaces, okay? This was the config. It did not show unoccupied workspaces. And I frankly thought it was a little cleaner looking. So let's just turn that back just so that you get, you know, you can say, oh yeah, I think you're right or not, you know. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. And now let's reload. And I, I, you know, you could always add the, um, uh, the, the font uh, icons back in if you choose to. I, I don't mind it. I actually, I prefer this. Um, so again, whatever you like. Let's go over to the first, or the first workspace. Yeah. So built-in modules and interactive modules are listed here. Um, we talked a little bit about them, but it, I did want to mention something about um, custom script modules. And what you can do is run a shell script that does something or defines something that you want on your polybar. These are the examples, system updates that are available, weather, um, mail, cryptocurrency, or prices. I know that um, I've done this with, uh, with the stock price. It's very possible. I think Matt has actually done this with the number of subscribers to his channel. So there's a number of things that you can do. Um, I don't know that I have any examples, but if I do, I'll, I'll definitely put them in the uh, scripts directory. So I will put... Um, something. If I can find them, I'll put them in this scripts directory um, so that you can give, uh, get an idea about how to extend your polybar even further. Now, I didn't mention this. Actually, I don't think I have a slide for this. Uh, but I did want to mention that there is multi-monitor support um, for polybar. I don't have two, I don't actually use two monitors, but I know that there is um, a way to, um, to define two different poly bars on, uh, in one configuration. You just have bar one and bar two, and then you're able to use something like XRander uh, in order to display um, a configuration on a dedicated monitor. I don't know if I said that correctly, but you get the idea that a, a monitor setting is not, like for example, um, let's say you wanted primary bar on DP1, um, and then you'd have a secondary bar on HDMI1, okay? Just letting you know that that is definitely a possibility. I just haven't defined it here. Why does Polybar work across completely different window managers? Well, it doesn't depend on the window manager. That's the reason. Uh, it talks to the X server directly. It reads from X11's EWMH, okay? The Extended Window Manager Hints. And it works with any window manager that follows that standard. As far as system info, it reads uh, PROC and SYS directly, not window manager specific. Uh, with regard to window titles, that's X property and any window manager provides it. So, it can, the config works with BSPWM i3 open box. It can work with DWM. I mean, that's the truth, but I don't use it for DWM, but it could work for DWM. Uh, it would be a little bit more, more challenging, frankly. But, you know, that's why I used it for these three, BSPWM i3 and open box. It just made sense. Now, I'm going to do Sway tomorrow. I'm not really sure why I decided to do it this way. Maybe it's because I did i3 and then I just decided, you know, I'll do the more modern i3. Uh, that way I can kind of like break up X11 window managers a little bit and then we'll move on to DWM and Awesome and stuff like that. Regardless, tomorrow's going to be about Sway and hope to see you then. Until then, later.